you want to take a just short view, if I may call it that, of the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. You just want to discuss it. Hallelujah. It is not something new, but it's something we have to pay attention to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Shaku pari la rido do 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 kuzanta kashi tra la 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 rido kishi taki sali pasadre la mukishi. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about your name. Sorry. Jesus, 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 there is something about your name. Jesus, Jesus, there is something about your name. Most high Jesus, Jesus, there is something about your name. Our Bible reading for this morning is taken from Romans chapter 10, 1 to the end. Romans chapter 10, 1 to the end. Please read for us. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 to the end. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. 
I was made manifest to those who did not ask of me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The title for this message is The Name of the Lord. The Name of the Lord. Amen. Our memory verse is taken from Romans 10, 13. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, which says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For, so, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Very powerful declaration. No ambiguity is very clear. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 28.10, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Remember the other one says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then the book of Proverbs 28.10 says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous runs into it and is safe. If you look at those two scriptures, you will begin to discover and begin to think that there's a discrepancy. The one, the first one says, whosoever shall run upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The second one says, the righteous shall run into the name of the Lord and he will be saved. Whosoever may connote or begin to mean everyone that comes, which is true. But then in the book of Proverbs, there's a narrowing down to who can come and be saved. If the name of the Lord is a strong tower, what is a tower. Because if you have to run into the name of the Lord, that is a strong tower. You have to know what the strong tower or the tower is so you can identify it to be able to run into it. Whenever I come to preach or discuss the scriptures, I begin with a lot of questions so that Whatever I'm saying, we could be on the same page when we answer those questions through the Bible. If the name of the Lord is a strong tower, as I said before, the scriptures are not new to us. We can quote it every time. But have we taken time to really study to show ourselves approved? of the things that we are speaking. Do you understand what the Bible is saying? Or are we basing our understanding in the secular, humanistic rendition of those word, keywords? We cannot do justice and have true and correct understanding if we base our understanding to the secular humanistic understanding of interpretations of words that we use commonly. There are carnal interpretations, intellectual interpretations that lies on the, on the realm of carnal and emotional rendition as different from spiritual and biblical scriptural interpretation. The book of Romans chapter eight made it very clear, made it just differentiated and contrasted 
the things of the spirit and the things of the flesh, or carnality. And we know that the Bible has shown us in several places the difference between the sons of God and the children of men. The sons of God operate in the realm of the spirit. The children of men operate in the realm of the uh, uh, carnality of flesh, intellectual. So as a Christian and as the righteousness of God or the righteousness of God, as the son of God in whom the son spirit is, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. When you come into that category, you are removed or you are expected to walk in the spirit, which leads to life. And of course, life here means internal life. As different from those who walk as children of men in intellectuality, intellectualism, carnality, and the flesh. The Bible says, anything carnal leads to death because they cannot please God. And if you cannot please God, you cannot be with God. Praise the Lord. So if the name of the Lord is a strong tower, what is a tower to start with? So you can identify it and run into it. And what does the Bible mean by a strong tower that the righteous should run into it? And why? a strong tower that the righteous should run into it. So first of all, what's a tower? What's a strong tower? So that we can identify it and know it and recognize it as the righteous and run into it. And the Bible says, for safety, you'll be saved. The name of the Lord. The Marian, Marian Webster Dictionary defines a tower as a building or structure typically higher than its diameter. In other words, it's taller than the width of it in measurement. And high uh, 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 relative, when well, this tower is high, this structure is high relative to the surroundings. And it may stand apart on its own or be attached to a larger structure and that may fully and may be fully walled in, in or of a skeletal framework. There's a lot of things put together there because I'm trying to describe the tower. A tower is a structure. What makes it a tower is that the length of it vertically is usually longer than the width of it horizontally. So the length might be 10 feet and the width five feet because it's longer upwards than wider. It is a tower, amen? It could stand alone by itself or it could be attached to another building. If you look at churches, you will see churches, and of course you will see the bell uh, tower higher than the church, even though the church itself is bigger in structure, but the tower is taller, amen? Hallelujah. A tower, can, uh, such structures, like towers can be referred, the structure that is referred as a tower are often used for some purposes. I'm trying to find a lot of things together. Are often used for some purposes. Amen. For instance, as a tolerant citadel, a tower can be a citadel, a fortress, a fortified place as a stronghold. In other words, can contain people. 
you can put people there because it's a focus on the strong. It can also be a large and permanent fortification, one that provides support or protection. Such a structure can be a permanent one. It can be a fortification to shut up or to protect a certain designated place or people. It could also be used as a bulwark. We are just talking about natural and uh, secular definition. A bulwark is a solid wall-like structure raised for defense, a strong support or protection, a tower of strength. You can see all the definitions and meanings of tower here means a structure, a deliberately built structure that is elevated higher than its environment, that is able to contain or to prevent things from coming in or protecting a particular place. So it has a lot to do with defense and protection. That's secular. Uh, uh, listen, when we look at the biblical rendition or meaning of tower, it is the meaning here of tower, on the other hand, can be understood from the Hebrew word for high tower. Hebrew word for high tower and its meaning. Amen. Remember, we looked at the secular to give us a general understanding that brings us to where humanity lies. I do this all the time to differentiate between because when Jesus Christ came, the first sermon he preached was to differentiate between humanity and the new man, which he represented. So as Christians, we will do ourselves good and justice when we always look at things, not from the secular humanity or humanistic interpretation, which is not particularly wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's not wrong. It's what helps us to communicate and understand with each other in our communication, in our business, in our play, in whatever we do. But then when it comes to the spiritual things, and when it comes to Christianity, the sons of God, true believers, the Lord Jesus Christ elevated us, the sons of God in his image to a different level, higher than the secular humanistic interpretation of things. The biblical meaning of tower, on the other hand, can be understood from the Hebrew word for high tower, misgab, M-I-S-G-A-B, misgab, tower, a high tower, meaning defense, refuge, fortress, high place, affording shelter, secure height, that is security, stronghold, a lofty place, inaccessible, speaks of altitude or elevation. You can see suddenly there is a different and better and clearer understanding of what the high tower is. If the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a high tower, it's a strong place, and the righteous needs to run into it. And when he does that, you'll be saved. You begin to understand what is this thing that the righteous have run into to be saved. It's a place of defense. It's a place of refuge. It's a place of, it's a fortress. It's a high place, affordable, affording shelter, secure height, like in security. Strong hold, a lofty place, inaccessible for invaders who are coming after you, speaks of altitude, 
lifted up for elevation. So if you want to be safe from the things of this world, if you want to be safe from the attack of the enemy, if you want to be safe from your enemies, you know, chasing you, which better place to go than the name of the Lord that meets all these qualifications? It's a place of defense, refuge, fortress, high place, affording shelter, secure height, insecurity that lifted you from their reach, stronghold that cannot be broken or breached, a lofty place, inaccessible to these enemies, speaks of altitude, the higher you are unto the Lord the farther, farther away you are from the enemy. It speaks of elevation, you are lifted up. A high tower here can also be looked at as a fortified structure and a military base, a citadel, a fortified structure to keep the enemy out and to keep the righteous in, in protection. It is like a military base that the enemy cannot breach. It is a citadel, a place of strength and a stronghold. That is what the name of the Lord is to the righteous. Scripture speaks of Jehovah being a strong tower. So that when you read these things, you begin to have an understanding of what the Bible is saying. He said, for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Psalms 61 3. That's the Lord, Jehovah, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thou has been a shelter. Remember our definition and analysis of a strong tower. It's like a shelter. For the righteous. That's what the Bible says. Run into it if you are the righteous and you'll be saved. Hallelujah. So Jehovah is for us, the righteous, a shelter and a strong tower from the enemy. Amen. We can easily glean from the above that strong tower has to do with power, might, boldness personal, social, or political security. And the name of Jesus Christ is a strong tower. And the Bible says, run into it. Run into it. Because that place, the tower and the strong tower, connotes a place of power, might, boldness, personal, social, or political security. When it says personal, it means personally private. It's a hiding place for you. When it means social, it does not mean canality. It means your interaction with the second and third parties. Your mingling with people means social activity and then political in governance in fitting into the structure of society that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the name of the Lord as a strong tower affords you these opportunities to personally live abundantly, socially, live abundantly and politically fit into a structure of society and still live abundantly. All you will find in the name of the Lord because it's a place of power, might, strength, boldness, security. When you are in the name of the Lord, you are free. You are in freedom. 
you can act with boldness because you're already in protection. Your enemy cannot overcome you. That's why the Bible, the Lord said in the Bible, he said in the world you will find tribulation or adversity or serious challenges. But in me, I have to overcome the world to in me you find peace. And in him, as the tower, you'll find that peace. How do you run? How do you run into it? How do you run into this tower? For the Bible commands that it's when you run into it that you'll find salvation, you'll find safety. That the tower is there, it's understandable. No one can dispute that the Lord is the tower. But you have to run into the Lord or into the name of the Lord, that is the Lord, for you to find the benefits of the strong tower. This is the reason why the Lord himself said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Get into that strong tower. Then every other comfort and benefit will be added to you. But we seldom do that because of the urgency of our need. We want to satisfy the things of the flesh to bring semblance of comfort. We begin to seek the things of the world first. We begin to seek those things that we perceive or imagine will bring us comfort, immediate gratification, rather than seeking the kingdom of God and the righteousness as we are commanded. Hallelujah. How do you run into it? The Bible says, by calling on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13 says, calling on the name of the Lord, just our memory verse, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the condition from going into that tower is to call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, by believing in his name, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on that name shall live and not die. You have eternal life. In other words, you are saved. First of all, call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Second, you believe in his name and you will not die, but live. And Romans 10, 11 also says, for the scripture said, whosoever believe on him shall not be put to shame, shall not be ashamed. Adversity, suffering, poverty, sickness, all those contrary things that denies us abundant life always place us in a humiliated situation that brings shame and embarrassment. That's why people don't easily discuss their problems because they are too ashamed to own up to those things that are happening to them. Nobody goes about to tell everybody I am bankrupt. Nobody goes about to tell everybody I am dying. Nobody goes about to tell everybody, oh, this is happening to me, this is happening to me, you all over the place. Because it's too embarrassing, too shameful. But the law, the Bible says, the scriptures declare that whosoever shall call, shall believe on the name, on his name, the name of the Lord, shall be, shall not be in shame. I don't know where you are today. The Lord has revealed to us that's a way to escape shame and embarrassment. There's a way to be saved. There's a way to access 
the things of God, the blessings and the, and the prosperity of God, the peace of God, the joy of God. It's by calling upon the name of the Lord. It's a promise that he has made. And the one who made this promise cannot fail. His word cannot fall to the ground unfulfilled. For the word that goes out of his mouth must accomplish that for which he has sent it. He cannot come back unfulfilled. He said that he who has promised will do it. He's faithful. He will do it. He has put up a challenge to everyone listening to me today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what the adversity that have hit you and visited you. I don't know what uh, uh, afflictions you are going through right now. As a righteous person who is a believer or an unrighteous person who is not yet saved. That's one solution. And that solution is Jesus Christ. The name above all names in heaven, in earth, and beneath the earth. And the scripture is now encouraging us to escape from all these situations, get into that place of safety, the strong tower. And the name of the Lord is that strong tower that is able to protect you, elevate you above your enemies, remove you from adversity and suffering and penury, and bring you to a place of peace where you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, above the reach of the enemy, above the reach of Satan and his cohort and demons and every other thing, because they are beneath you. Ephesians 2.6 tells you that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Have you taken refuge in that name? Do you understand the name? Right now on Facebook, you could be watching me from any country. I don't know. But be frank with yourself. Be real to yourself. Do not lie to yourself. Whatever religion that you are practicing, does that religion afford you that secret place of the Most High? Does it afford you that strong tower that it, Lord God himself has become for you? Do you feel safe or do you feel insecure and afraid? Are you in a place where the enemy can easily take a slingshot at you, freely without disturbance or hindrance? Or are you in a secure place called the name of the Lord? where there is absolute and complete safety. For the Bible says that he is the shade round about you. He is the hedge of fire around you. And he is the glory within you. That is my God, Jehovah God, who gave us his name as Jesus Christ. Have you reached out in sincerity to him? Or are you still debating whether he is the son of God or not? Whether he is the true savior or not? He came and gave his life in demonstration of who he is. He died so that you will not die. He made himself accessible to you that he might be your protection. It is the wall around you that the enemy cannot breach. He is the one in whom you live, move, and have your being if you are the righteous of God. And that invitation has gone out today. Come. Come. If you don't want to. Continue in your shame. Come. You know, advert cities, afflictions, satanic and demonic attacks abound. And the Bible says 
in Psalms 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. But the Bible says also, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are upon unto their cry. That is verse 15 of Psalm 34. There must be adversity. There is always adversity. This is very pervasive. As long as you are in the fallen world as we are today, you will have afflictions. You will come face to face with adversity, suffering, victimization, abuse, sickness, depression, and all those things. Sickness covers everything from diabetes to cancer to tumor to whatever life is. They are in this world. They are not getting better. They are getting worse because the world is being polluted and that contributes to more of the satanic activities are increasing because the world is becoming more and more adamant to God. They are becoming unbelieving. So Satan is now having a field day, moving freely because opposition is getting less. When majority of the population don't believe in God, of course, if you don't believe in God, you believe in Satan. There's no vacuum, there's no in-between place. And Satan, because he has not created anything, he did not create man, he did not create anything, has no value for anything. He abuses just like tyrants, seize power that do, that do not belong to them and then use them to oppress the people to whom the power belongs. Satan is doing that. The Bible says he comes to kill, to steal, to kill and to destroy because he has no respect, no value for human life, for creation. And if you are still not in the Lord, the conqueror of all things, the creator of all things, you will still be a sitting duck, an unprotected target for the enemy to be taking shots at you at his pleasure. If you are still wondering whether you should be a Christian or not, I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm asking you to go to the Lord and call upon his name. Praise the Lord. Yes, the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, not upon everyone, upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Many times we pray, we lament and we are saddened by the evil happening in so many places and people's lives being wasted and killed. People use knives to cut other people's throats. Can you imagine the kind of mindset those people who cut other people's throats have? They kill people and put them in mass graves. What kind of people are those who will do such a distractedly but it happens all over the place. And the people who do it justify it. That is evil, deliberated. These things happen, they are all over the place. Amen? These challenges like sickness, poverty, suffering, lack of progress and prosperity, depression, tribulation will pull you down but when you run in the high tower, God himself will be your protection from all these things. Evil are bound. You cannot deny that. You can't pray them away, but you can be protected from them. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, when he was praying, John chapter 17, Father, I'm not praying that you take them out of the world but you secure them in the world. Secure them because the Father is the strong power. When you run into him or his name, because he will be presented by his name, 
you ask what you are told. That's why when you look at the Bible, every name in the Bible given to any person describes the character of that person and the eventual outcome of that person's destiny. I'm a student and a scholar of names. I know that I, that is something that uh, uh, years ago, I prepared a manuscript. I, I wrote a book that was never really published. And I, I think I should still go and look for it and publish it. It's about names and the importance of names. When you are giving names, look at, take examples from the Bible, the importance of names. Because one thing people know and use about you more than anything else is your name. If your name does not mean blessings, but curses or adversity, that is the most and most frequent thing that people give to you. Every time they call your name, it's either they are cursing you or they are blessing you. So if your name does not mean blessing or something positive, I would ask you to go and change it. Hallelujah, that's another topic. Yes, life challenges like sickness, poverty, suffering, lack of progress, and prosperity, depression, tribulation, we pull you down. But when you are in the high tower, that is in God, he, God, automatically pulls you up. He will lift you up to a high place, an elevated place, the high tower, the strong tower, a secure place where you are seated in heavenly places with him above the realm and reach of the enemy activity, the enemy and his activity. Where you are seated in that high place, Ephesians 2.6, you are seated in a realm of God where the enemy cannot venture into. He is not able. Remember, in the book of Revelation, we are told that has been cast down, that is among the people of the world. It's no longer in those highly elevated heavenly places where you are seated in Christ Jesus. And when you take care a realm, when you run and flee, into the name of the Lord. That is where you are seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man-made towers, physical structures, as described in our secular definition of tower, cannot withstand the strikes, the attacks of the enemy. But we have a high tower that can withstand every dem demonic attack when they come, because they will surely come. Those attacks will surely come. Remember the Bible tells us that your weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in pulling down strong foes. Your weapons of your warfare can only be gotten from that strong tower. They are not carnal. Because carnal weapons, as I have taught a couple of weeks ago cannot be effective against Satan, against satanic and worldly attacks. Only the divine weapon that are not carnal but spiritual through God can bring you victory, can allow you to enjoy the victory that you have received through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no question whether the attacks will come. You will experience adversity and suffering, challenges in life. There's no question. This is pervasive and it's all over the place as long as you are in this fallen world. And you have the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God reigning side by side in the world today. You will come to a close encounter with this dark forces of hell to, from Satan. You come to a close brush as you go about your activities in the world. You brush 
the evil side of this world, the dark side of this world. So you have to be prepared. Amen? You have to be prepared. The Bible declared in, um, in uh, Isaiah 54, 15, this thing that I'm telling you now. He said, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. He said, behold, they shall surely gather together. The evil ones will come against you. Their activities will brush close to you. You will experience their activity around you. What you have been inoculated against them depends whether you have taken a refuge in the name of the Lord. You can't avoid the things that go around the world because you are still in this world. You haven't been taken away. The time for you to be taken away shall come. And when that time comes, it shall be accomplished. But meanwhile, you are here. You will be affected by the things that happen in this world. The Bible says that God sends rain upon the righteous and the evil. Alike. It doesn't say, okay, don't go to the righteous or don't go to the evil. You are in the world. Whatever he does in the world is for the world. But those that are in the world who take refuge in his name will have a different experience, an expression of what is going on in the world. So the Bible already told you that they will gather, devil will gather, he will gather his forces, his, his uh, hordes, his wicked witches and wizards and all those things. But he says their gathering will not be of him. He is not in support and he's not upholding their gathering. They are just having a time of their freedom until before judgment to do whatever they please until judgment comes. But if you take a refuge in the name of the Lord, their guardian will not affect you. Amen? Hallelujah. This promise is to those, the promise that their guardian will not affect you is for those who make God their refuge and their strong tower. God can only be a high tower to and for them. And for, for you, when you run into him. That was why he invited you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. His promises will become activated for you. Remember, he says this is the pleasure and the willingness of the Father to give you the key to the kingdom. But he does not throw the key to the kingdom outside the tower. Only those who are in the tower, who are in the protection and protective custody of his name, shall have the key to the kingdom. And the key to the kingdom opens up access to you for every blessing of the kingdom. Because you are an heir to it and you are joint heir with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, if you are weary in this invitation, a man concluding, if you are weary and you are heavy laden by the issues of this world, come to me and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Come to me, run into the shelter, run into a strong tower that the name of the Lord is. What are you experiencing now out there? What are you faced? What is threatening your well-being and your comfort and joy? There is a solution. Run into the Lord, call upon his name. Right now, even as we are speaking, he is available, he has promised you. I love that song. It was the song that was that I chose during my wedding. He has promised he will never fail. He has promised he will never fail. Jesus has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forever sure. His faithfulness 
is forever more. God promised this time for those who will run into the tower. He said, come, if you are weary and you're heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He promised to God and says to all, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty thing that you do not know. You will find that in Jeremiah 33. Are there questions in your life? Are there issues you have grappled with? Are you still not to find solution? He said, call upon me. Come into this strong tower. Seek my face. Humble yourself and pray. In your calling upon the Lord, check yourself. And there are things you have to confess. Do not pretend before the Lord. He sees all things. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that everything we do is naked before him. That's nothing hidden. So your sincerity and true confession and repentance will suffice for you. We open the treasures of the Lord. He will show you great and mighty things that you do not know that will bring permanent solution to your issues. Amen. Finally, he says, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Your salvation will be made sure. The Bible says, for God knows those who are his, having this seal. The condition of God is sure. Having this seal, that God knows those who are his. And he said, let those that name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. You cannot come to the Lord laden in sin, except you are ready to confess them and give them up to repent of them. For the name of the Lord is sufficient for you. The name of the Lord is more than a remedy and solution to any imaginable situation that you can find yourself. Have faith in the Son of God. Believe in his name. Call upon his name today. Wherever you are, all you need to do is to ask him to come into your heart and pray and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I have sinned and I have fallen short of your glory. I repent and I regret and I repent and confess my sins. Father, these things, these things are done in the time of ignorance. And your word says, that in the time of ignorance, you winked at my foolishness. You winked at my sins. You looked away from them. You removed them from me. As I confess them today and put them far away from me, as the east is far from the west. Father God Almighty, I come in total repentance. I am assured and confident that your word is correct when you say that you are faithful and just, you will forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I come to you today, Lord, I take my refuge in your name. I take my refuge in your name. Have mercy on me. I ask all this in the name of Jesus. The Bible says when you pray this prayer, the Bible says, the righteous cry. This prayer is the prayer of crying unto the Lord. The righteous cry. And the Lord heareth when you are the righteous and you cry. And delivers you out of all your troubles. Not some of your troubles. All your troubles. For this to happen. You must come in. Run into the name of the Lord. You must venture in. You must pick up courage. You must go to God. Fall on your feet. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name above every name. At which whenever it is mentioned, every name shall bow. The Lord is here with open arms, waiting for you to come in today, for he says that we give you rest. I will reveal to you and show you great and mighty thing that you do not know that will bring solution, antidote, 
an answer to all your questions. Let us pray. Talk to the Lord right now. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runs into it and is safe. Go into a place of your peace and safety today. Go into a place of confidence in the Lord. Go into that place of righteousness and assurance. As you are praying that prayer, prepare your bread and your wine right now. Hallelujah. For the name of the Lord is a strong power. Indeed, it's a protective place. You are placed in the protective custody of the Lord. When you call upon his name today, you know what your situation is, you know what you're going through, you know what your conditions are. The Lord knows as well. Will you call upon him? When you go into that strong tower, then you will be able to lay all your cares at his feet. For the Bible says that he cared for you. He will take the burdens away from your shoulder. He will break your yoke and set you free. That name is Jesus. There is no other name like it. It is the greatest name in heaven and earth and beneath the earth. And that name every knee shall bow. The knee of your situation, depression from poverty and sickness, curses and all those things will bow before that name on your behalf. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please pick up your bread as we do every Sunday and break it with thanksgiving. Break it with thanksgiving. And eat it, partake of the body of Christ that was broken for your sake. The Bible says, by the stripes of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are healed. You are healed, Lord. We are repeating this as a point of connection to access our healing and draw down the benefit of what our Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished for us on the cross of Calvary. When he paid the full price with his own body. Receive it, break it, and eat it by faith as you take your refuge in his name. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous runs into it and he is safe. Amen. The Bible says, after the same manner, he took up the cup and declared, This is my blood shed for you. This represents the new covenant with you in my blood that sealed you as sons of God, as different from children of men. By taking this cup, for the life of a man is in his blood. By taking this cup that represents my blood, you are taking my life in you as the son of God. We take it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you and we worship you, Father. We take our refuge in your name. Thank you for our protection. Thank you for sealing us as unto yourself. 
to receive our healing. We receive victory over adversity. We are elevated above suffering, above abuse, above poverty, above depression. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.